what is up guys welcome to the being beautifully honest podcast and channel thanks for being here being subbed if you're not hit the button and if you're listening on youtube hit that like it's like walking in the room and hitting that light switch let's brighten up the place and get into this conversation now i recently talked a little bit about the most recent audio that was released by the vlogger original straight no chaser and just the disgusting conversation that hotels forever side piece was sharing about melody's possible trauma from childhood which is just disgusting and it just it gets me upset every time i even think about it which is why i try not to and i don't talk about it too much but i don't know why people are acting like this is some bombshell that Arion admitted that she had the child that she had with him on purpose and out of spite because that's something that we knew about her years ago. Now, for those of you who were watching Love and Marriage Huntsville from the very beginning and who may have watched people who were giving reviews and recaps on these reality shows, you might be familiar with Funky Dineva, but I've been, I have been watching Funky Dineva for a long time. I remember years ago when the chick that used to do my hair, she put me on to him because <laughs> she was doing my hair and then she turned on YouTube and she was like watching this guy with red lipstick on and wigs, full beard and mustache and just looking a hot crackhead mess i'm just listening i'm just saying i was like what in the world is that but he was doing reviews on reality shows and that's what kind of got me hooked because years ago i used to watch shows like love and hip-hop love and hip-hop atlanta the real housewives of atlanta which i still you know do watch but we know it's just a different day and time but i remember when he started reviewing love and marriage huntsville and I was already watching the show because I've mentioned to, for those of you who have, who've, you know, been here for a minute and you've heard me discuss Love and Marriage Huntsville and how I got to watching it. It wasn't anything I knew about. I was just flipping the channels one day and I saw this show come on, on the OWN network and it was called Love and Marriage Huntsville. And I'm like, oh my God, Huntsville. I had just learned about the place because my husband, who is a veteran and also was a military government contractor, he started working in Huntsville, Alabama, and I had never heard of Huntsville before. So we actually kind of lived there for a little bit, but we didn't really live there because he spent the majority of his time overseas. So we were only in Huntsville for a little period of time. And I was like, I'm not living down here. So I, you know, stayed in my home, in our home. But with that being said, that's what got me hooked on Huntsville. And when I started seeing that Funky Daniva was reviewing the show, I was like, oh my gosh. Well, I distinctly remember when Arion started reaching out to Funky Daniva and he shared it on his channel. He did not share her name back then. But he got emails from her. He read an email that she sent. This girl had been looking for clout and recognition for a very long time. This is nothing new. So the fact that people are acting like this is some bombshell that she dropped, that she got pregnant out of spite, she admitted that she had multiple terminations, and you know what I mean by that, but decided, oh, this one is going to be a keeper, that's not a shock. And to be honest with you, that's not something that is new. There are plenty of people that have done stuff like that. And ultimately, it's kind of stupid because if you're having sex with someone unprotected or sometimes even protected because we know all birth control is, you know, it's got, it's got a fail factor, it's possible you're going to get pregnant. So as long as you're screwing somebody, yeah. So getting pregnant on purpose, like seriously, but some people may be looking at it in a way that, well, she terminated the other ones and she kept this one. Well, that's not anything new. There are plenty of people that have unfortunately had multiple terminations and decided, you know what, I'm tired of that. I don't want to keep putting my body through that. But I'm not saying that she didn't have any ill intent with bringing that one into the world to think that that was in some way going to do something to her because we know that 
the majority of the things that she has done, it has been to spite Melody, the ex-wife, not so much to spite him, even though he was the one that didn't deserve any attention. And if you're going to try to spite someone, it would probably be this nigga because he isn't worth, he isn't worth crap. And speaking of not being worth crap, I meant to talk about this over a week ago. Shout out to the YouTube channel, Hannah Grace. But she, I, I listened to some content that she shared about Martel pretty much lying and defrauding a couple out of money he was going to be building a home for them. Now, I don't know if they just were people that were somewhat familiar with him or were recommended to him to do an addition to their home. So they decided to give this dude a try because he's also on television. Because, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, because I'm pretty sure, not knocking anyone that is African-American, but I'm quite sure the couple that hired him are not Caucasian. Because if they were, he'd probably already be in jail by now. But I'm just saying, the fact that he was able to get this couple to entrust him with their money and to do this job for them. And he knew, I know that he knew that he had every intention on filing for bankruptcy, chapter seven at that, not chapter 13, you know, a reorganization of debts, but to pretty much wipe everything out. He knew he was going to do that. And he went ahead, got this couple to trust him, give him all of this money to do this addition to their home, all to not do the work, complete the job. I don't even know if he hammered a nail in the wall, okay? But the debt of this couple, he had discharged in bankruptcy court and he pretty much lied. And lying in bankruptcy is a criminal offense. It's not something that's prosecuted often because to be honest with you, there are a lot of people that may not be 100% honest. Honestly, a lot of people are not 100% honest when they do file for bankruptcy. And it's not so much that they're trying to defraud anyone, but listen, honestly, who really wants to lose the assets that they may have already obtained in the life from the hard work that they did put in all to lose it to pay off some creditors? So I I get it that some people, they may put stuff in other people's names and different things like that before they go and file. It's honestly more common than most people believe or are aware of, but it's rare that they will prosecute in a criminal manner when people are dishonest in these bankruptcy filings because they do state all of these things and the attorneys will say, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? And they have to sign off that under penalty of perjury, which is a crime, it's a criminal offense, that they could prosecute. But they don't often do that unless someone is really hard-pressed to get it done. And it sounds like this couple may be willing to go that extra mile to see him behind bars to be criminally prosecuted for defrauding them. Because I do believe that they believe that he had every intention on getting their money and then filing for bankruptcy, not doing the work, and then just telling them, y'all, just hold off, just wait a minute. Once this bankruptcy is discharged, then I'm going to get back to it. Knowing good and doggone well that he was not going to, one, do the work, and two, he was going to use the money for other purposes. He can't even afford to get Uber Eats for his kids when he has joint custody of them during the time that he's supposed to have them. But yet, he took this couple's money. I believe it was around $60,000. He took $17,000 from Melody. And honestly, I feel that that's something that should not have been discharged in bankruptcy court either. But I remember when Melody did the interview with Tasha K years ago, and she, you know, she stated that he stole that money out of the joint bank account. She was supposed to get that money back, but he filed bankruptcy. So there's nothing she could do about it. And I was saying back then, I was like, girl, I mean, I get it. Some people, they don't want to waste their time or they don't feel that it's worth the hassle or they just want their peace of mind. So they decide to move forward. And I know all too well because I've done that in my own life as well. But, you know, sometimes we're more crunk for other people than we are for ourselves. And I remember saying like, girl, I would see if I could press charges against him for theft because that was something that he was court ordered to do. It wasn't just like he got a credit card, got 
you know, too much in way over his head and decided to go and file bankruptcy. No, he took that money knowing that he was going to do that. And in my opinion, I feel like that would have been something that could have been a criminal offense. But with all of that being said, this couple, they're pressing to get that portion of his debts to be added back to what he actually owes and possibly pressing to get him prosecuted for bankruptcy fraud. And I believe that they should go the extra mile with this dude because he has been living his life, not extravagantly. We know he's been struggling, but he's been living his life and he has just been not making any efforts to make this couple whole in getting them back to the place that they desire to be. And they deserve to be, not just desire, but he's on television flexing, wearing these suits that I believe are rented or borrowed or loaned to him. And he's having meetings with this guy about having a suit collection and all this other stuff. He's getting these gigs booked to be a speaker at a woman's empowerment brunch that got <laughs> he got canceled from, not got canceled, but he got canceled from having somebody write up this amazing bio of all of these amazing things that he has done and who he is, but yet he's out here defrauding people. Listen, none of this surprises me, but I don't know why anyone is so surprised by the fact that Arion had this child. And it's weird to say had the child on purpose because if you get pregnant, you're going to have a baby. (laughs) You know what I mean? And I don't even think that, you know doing the continual terminations of pregnancy it shouldn't be used like birth control anyway so but just the fact that she stated that i'm you know pretty sure is what got people outraged but no one should be outraged by anything that she says or does because that's just who she is and it looks like will forever be because she's at the age that she is now She's been with him for, what, 10 years? There's been, I don't believe, any growth or maturity at all. And to be honest with you, I remember when Funky Dineva talked about her years ago, and even when she had the phone conversation with Tasha K before she did the interview. So before she was put in the forefront and you just saw, like, this one picture of her, she just looked like someone that was... a. Uh, I don't know what you would call a normal side chick, but I didn't think that this person was childlike. And the more she has been speaking, the more she has been in the public, the more we are exposed to her. To me, it's low-key like Martel was a predator, and even though she may not have been underage, he was looking for someone that was close enough to it, like R. Kelly. And she reminds me of one of those immature chicks that was with R. Kelly. The whatever their names are. I don't even remember their names right now. Azriel and the other one. And the others, because we know there's been a multitude of them, right? But I'm just saying, it's just weird that people are surprised by that revelation. There's nothing shocking about that whatsoever. And I really do hope that he is found liable for bankruptcy fraud and that he is prosecuted because I... I just believe that that was every intention that he had. He found a sucker to be able to afford to front him that type of cash. And he just used it for for whatever he wanted to use it for. And that overall, that alone is fraud. Because they gave him the money, not just for the fees for labor and for his work, but the money for the materials the construction, um, you know, costs and all of that other stuff. Where did that money go? He didn't even buy one nail or a hammer. He used it fraudulently. He didn't use it for what he was supposed to use it for. It wasn't like he had a credit card and he charged it on, in all of these different places. No, he received money for a specific intent and purpose and that was not what it was used for. So that alone is fraud. So honestly, I don't even know how long ago that situation happened, but I would see if I could press charges against him myself for fraud. And I remember years ago, just a little quick story, many years ago, 
I had hired someone to do some work at my home. It was to build a deck and to do some landscaping work. They did some of the work. They didn't complete everything. And I kept hounding, 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 and I never got it. And so I didn't want to sue the person in civil court. I wanted to actually prosecute them criminally. So I contacted the police because the person admitted that they used the rest of the the money for something else. Like I had it in writing in a text message. And you know, the police told me that this is a civil matter because the person did some of the work. They said if he didn't do anything, then you could prosecute criminally and you could press charges. But because he did some of the work, this is now a civil matter. And so you have to deal with it in civil court. Every state is different. So I don't know if it was just the state that I reside in that had that type of rule. But I don't believe that Martel did anything for the work that they had hired him to do. So in that sense, I would see that as theft. We gave you money for one purpose. You never did the work. And then you went and filed for bankruptcy. I would see if I could prosecute him criminally myself and not just wait for the bankruptcy court to prosecute him for bankruptcy fraud. He deserves that too, but I would see if I could prosecute him criminally for that because I don't know if the statute of limitations is up for them to sue him in civil court because I believe that the bankruptcy discharge is done, but that doesn't stop anyone from suing after a bankruptcy discharge. And... I just, I don't know. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to talk about that. And I I would really love to know what you guys think about it. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for being here, liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until next time, I wanted to keep it brief, beautiful. And now I'm going to say bye.